Hi everyone, what's up? Today we're on a quest to discover the perfect cup of coffee. And we'll embark on a journey to compare these three burr sets that are compatible with the Varia VS3 coffee grinder. And at the very end of this video, I'll demonstrate how you can change these burrs in and out of the grinder. Now, every coffee lover knows that the burr set directly affects the taste and the quality of their brew. But with so many options, making a decision can be overwhelming. Whether you prefer fine espresso grinds or coarser grinds for pour overs or French press, this video will help you understand the differences and make that choice that better suits your tastes. But first, let's fuel our caffeine cravings by hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. And together we'll create that world where every cup is half full and bad coffee is just a distant memory. Plus, you'll never miss out on any of the latest coffee gear videos or tips. Sounds pretty good? Let's get into this one. So what sets these burr sets apart? They're all 38 mm six core conical burrs with a titanium coating. This enhances their hardness and heat tolerance. This coating improves the durability and the precision of the burrs and keeps the cutting edge cooler during the grinding process. And the hardness of a burr set is measured by HRC, a standard unit of measurement for metal hardness. Now the Hypernova burr set with a HRC of 65 is made from 440 grade stainless steel, while the other three burr sets referred to as Supernovas are made from 420 grade stainless steel. And two of those burr sets are also coated in titanium. These have a HRC value of 60. Now with the 440 grade stainless steel having a higher HRC value than 420, these iridescent Supernovas will naturally be more resistant to wear and tear than the other three. So to look at the benefits of using each of these burr sets in actual coffee grinding, I did discover that the titanium coated burrs versus the non-coated, these grind much slower due to their smoother surfaces and those added elements to the burr surface. This leading to a slower grind time, though subsequently improving the quality of the grind output. There is also additional seasoning required of these burrs and I would suggest probably around 500 grams at a fine grind setting just to get a head start. As well as when I was swapping these burrs in and out, it resulted in slight changes to the zero point, but by only like a notch or two. Now, despite an improved flavor in the cup, I've decided not to subject you to a blind cupping as the differences in these burrs, whilst they're not a massive leap in improvement, there was still a significant difference between the default burrs to all of the upgraded burrs, but not a whole lot of difference between each of the upgraded burrs to really justify the time in this video. And Varia have been great and really transparent about their marketing claims that each of these burr sets, the upgraded sets, have the same benefits in terms of grinding performance. But what sets these apart from the default burrs is that these focus on improving the particle distribution at the finer grind settings, which is essential for brewing a great espresso. And Varia are bang on the money here. And in my own comparative testing, each of these upgraded burr sets improved the balance of sweetness, acidity, and body when I was brewing espresso. Where the default burrs, they got like mid sixes to low sevens across the board with slightly less body and therefore less complexity. The upgraded burr sets, these all went on to add a richer, more enjoyable experience to the flavor overall. And I would place the titanium coated supernova burr sets side by side almost as equal because personally, I didn't come to any real conclusion as to whether the gold was better than the black or the black was better than the gold. And there's really nothing on the surface of these burrs, no pun intended there, that really points to one being better than the other. However, in saying that, the Hypernova burr set on the other hand, these were better again than the Supernova coated burrs, where I would say the Hypernovas scored high eights for that balance in sweetness, acidity, and body, whereas the Supernovas only scored the high sevens to low eights. So with all the upgraded burr sets ready to pivot your espresso brewing in a better direction, they are also still designed to improve your filter brews as well. However, I wouldn't necessarily say that you'll notice that as a difference quite as clearly as that in espresso brewing. And for what it's worth, the Varia VS3's own 420 grade stainless steel set no coating, I found more than satisfactory to the flavor fund. And I have a great comparison video where I take the default burrs and I compare them up against the Niche Zero and a Eureka Mignon. Do check that video out and you can find that from the link up above and below. In conclusion, when it comes to choosing a burr set for the Varia VS3 grinder, it really comes down to personal preference 
and the type of coffee that you wanna make. Considering things such as, if you're using light roasted coffee, then you might benefit well with the Hypernova Burst set. Or if you're just simply chasing more clarity and sweetness, then any of these upgraded burst sets are gonna cross the line and certainly last a lot longer than the uncoated default burrs will. Whichever burst set you do choose, just remember to regularly clean and maintain your grinder for its best performance and longevity. Now lastly, at the time of making this video, I'd been informed about Varia bringing out a further burst set. This is gonna be referred to as the Ultra Hypernova with an added HRC value of 67 and teeth in the pre-crushing burr geometry, which I propose will decrease the particle distribution further. However, personally, I've been very happy with the Varia VS3 grinder's performance thus far, and I use one daily. So if you have any further questions on this grinder or these burst sets, Add it in the comments section down below, I'd be more happy to get back to you. And I haven't forgotten, stay on to the end of this video if you wanna know how to switch these burrs in and out easily. Otherwise, thanks for watching to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one. All right, changing the burr set on the Varia VS3 grinder. Got my grinder, got my new burrs. I'm gonna place the Hypernova burr set into this grinder here. VS3 manual. Back inside page, this is the instructions to changing the burst set. Now, I found it quite wordy, but uh, you can always refer to this if you get lost. Uh, perhaps just read through it first anyway, and then hopefully this video section will also help you see how it's done. But it's there, it's definitely there to refer to. Varia, fantastic. They've got all your tools and even some spare parts in there. What you need out of this little bag is your wrench, and your Allen key. Now I'm gonna, not gonna change any of the screws or the springs right now, so we don't need the rest of this. Before we get started, unplug your grinder. Remove this completely, turn it off, unplug it. We don't need the grinder turning on whilst we're trying to change the burrs. Golly gosh, burr set. It's a cool little box, has all the information on the back, and I have my iridescent Hypernova Burr Set. These, it's just mint. These are so good. They look amazing. We got them, that we're, we're gonna place them in. Now I will also use a brush. I have a vacuum cleaner handy because it's a good time to clean your grinder out. And I have this plastic spoon because uh, we're gonna use this in a sec. So something plastic like a uh, chopstick or something like that will work as well. Probably use the end of that even. All right, what's first? Remove the grinds cup, kind of remove all the moving parts on the grinder at the moment, or the removable parts. Top of the hopper lid, the bellows, and the grind adjustment ring. We can sight, we can remove all that. Now, nothing left on the grinder, except we're gonna now remove the top hopper here. And all you need to do is adjust this, coarser and coarser and coarser until it comes off. That'll pop off. Now be aware underneath this, there is an O-ring that sits either inside here or inside the top burr carrier. So just make sure also the how everything is placed and seated, which way it's facing, upwards or downwards, right? Because it's really important that you put all of these things back exactly how you took them out. So there are a few washers, there are a few pins, there are a few chocks, they all need to go back the same way they came out. So I kind of just take, remove that, place it on the bench, and then I would just pick that up exactly the same way and place it back down. That's how I do it. So remove those. Now we have full access to the inner burr carrier, uh, sorry, the outer burr carrier and the inner burrs. What we want to do now is I kind of just pinch both sides of the outer burr carrier, twist that a little bit, and we can lift that up. Now that's the outer burr carrier. I'm gonna come back to this in a sec, but we wanna get these inner burrs out. There is a screw underneath that. There are two washers holding that burr in place. This is where I use a plastic thing. Now I place this inside the burr chamber. Don't use metal at all because we, you know, we're gonna be using the wrench to move the burrs and this is gonna place pressure against the burrs so they don't spin. Using metal is just gonna scratch up and dint your burr chamber or your burrs. 
So we don't want to do that. That's why you use something plastic. The wrench fits perfectly on the top nut. Now this is going to be opposite to what you expect. So it is actually clockwise to remove this top nut. Like so. Once it's kind of undone, I would just use my fingers to undo it now. Also take note with all of these screws that we undo, take note of how much it takes to undo them. So how tight they are, because that's the sort of tightness you want to do them back to as well. Did I do that? Yeah, there we go. So we take the nut off. Like I said, there are two washers underneath this nut. We have a tightening washer and then a flat washer. So tightening washer first and then underneath that, the flat washer. Just make sure they go back on in the same, uh, same way as well. Then we can have full access to the inner burr. That's the inner burr there. Bit of grinds in there, but I'm honestly really surprised. Like that is almost a month's worth of grinding and there's barely any grinds in that chamber, which is fantastic. All right, so that's the stainless steel inner burr. Uh, I'm also going to remove, so I can kind of reach in with two fingers and jiggle it about. I'm also gonna remove the spinner in there. So this moves around the burr chamber and scrapes all the grinds inside the burr chamber out, of the, out into the chute. Now this, has a few things in it as well. So take note of that. We have a chock that just fell out. So it looks like a tiny little bit of flint and that chocks between the spinner and the shaft and holds that in place. So it's not just free spinning. So this, you really, you wanna do this on a space where if you drop this, you can find it easily. Uh, I've dropped this already once and been looking for it for a while. Otherwise, it if it drops into the chute, thankfully it drops straight down and onto your magnet, where your magnetic catch cup is and actually stays there. So I just keep it there. That's a handy place to know where it is. But I've taken the spinner out. The spinner also has a pin inside it and that's what the burr sits in. So we can just place that next to the burrs at the moment. And that's the complete burr chamber emptied there. While we're at it, All right, so that's the, wait for the vacuum cleaner to wind back down again. All right, so that's the inner burr. Uh, so that's the complete burr chamber, clean and tidy now. Now we're gonna take the outer burr out. Now the outer burr requires the smaller Allen key and there are three screws on the outer burr carrier holder, which holds it into place and we just wanna, Again, just take note, remove these screws, but take note at how tight they are. Now the outer burr carrier, remove the top off of it. But as you do, just be aware that there are two pins that go through that top carrier down into the bottom carrier. They might fall out. So you wanna just take note of A, where they sit and B, um, if they fall, just make sure you know where, where they land. There we go, They're, they've stuck into the bottom burr carrier. So just also take note of this orientation of this. There's a groove that you wanna face up. So it's not down, you wanna have that groove facing up. And then you can remove the in outer burr and you'll also notice the outer burr has a flat spot. And in the flat spot, there is a chock in the outer burrs. So you just need to make sure that you don't lose that chock. Place that aside as well and that's the outer burr carrier completely gone. You've removed the outer burrs, you've removed the inner burrs. Now it's just to clean everything up and place the new burr set in and move it and put everything back together, which we'll do. Let's do that now. Uh, just kind of wipe down these parts. There's not too much retention on these at all, to be honest, which is great. Not a lot of build up. not a lot of build up on the burrs either. That's really it. Yeah, oh no, that's it, the spinner as well. Just quickly clean the spinner. It's a little bit more on this one. Spinner goes in first. Let's just lock the spinner in now. Uh, spinner can go in, making sure that the smooth surface with the pin is facing up. And you'll notice on the drive shaft of the grinder, there is a notch and you wanna line that notch up with the notch on the spinner. Now you have your chock, and your chock is going to go in straight down the middle of that hole. This is a little bit tricky uh, to get your hands in there and just to place it in, but uh, like I said, if it drops, it usually just drops straight down and sits on the bottom here. So I really like that part that about this grinder. 
You can also hold the spinner in place because it will tend to spin on you, <laughs> surprisingly. There you go, it's easy enough. So once you've got the chock in place, it's not gonna move at all. Uh, next, we're gonna place the inner burr set in. Now, you'll notice the pin on the spinner and there is a hole in the burrs, so the hole will just sit over the top of the spinner and stop the burrs from spinning. There we go, like so. Washers, flat washer first, then your tightening washer, then your screw going anti-clockwise to tighten. Make sure you tighten enough, but not too much. Like so. All right, so that's your inner burr in. Woo, that's the inner burr in. Now the outer burr. So the outer burr with the outer burr, the bottom outer burr carrier with the pins facing upwards. Uh, and you want your outer burrs with the teeth of the burr. Well, the, the, you can see the, the shape of the burrs facing upwards. So the actual finer teeth are facing downwards and the big chunky teeth are upwards and you wanna place that in. You'll notice on these burr sets, at the tops of the circles, there is a flat spot. So you want that flat spot to fall in line with where the chock goes. So there's a little indent out in the lower burr carrier, upper, the lower upper burr carrier, and where the flat spot meets the space, that's where you throw the chock in. Make sure there's not enough space there so it can't spin too hard. That's the way to do it. There we go, we got there. Now from here, I'm gonna place the upper, the upper outer burr carrier over the top. Now notice there are three holes for your screws and then two holes for the pins to place down through. So you kind of just wanna line all them up so they all line up perfectly. Push that down over the pins. Make sure it go down nice and flat so it sits flat against the lower outer burr carrier, and then place your screws back in, and that'll secure that in place. All right, so we've tightened up the outer burr set. Inner burr set's all ready to go. Now, there's no real alignment here. Uh, you just need to make sure that these little outer edges are sitting on the springs themselves, and it falls into place. Now you can feel that springiness in there as well. Now from here, grab the ball bearing and place that in the groove of the upper burr carrier. And then you can place the bean funnel in over that. And then gently screw that on in a clockwise direction. Giving it a gentle push down, it should grab and then turn all the way. Turn until it's fully tight and it lines up zero perfectly, which is great. Just undo that before you start using it. And then we can place it all back together again. Dosing cup in, we've got a grind adjustment dial indicator. We've got a bellows, a bellows lid, spare burrs, and it's ready to go. And that is how you change the VS3's Burrs. See you around.